okay in this problem here we are given that y is equal to sine x cosine x which is really just the product of these two and we're asked to find the second derivative right and obviously I hope you know that to find the second derivative y double prime over there we need to find out what y prime is right so maybe I should add that to our list let's go find y prime first and then we can take the derivative of that and that gives us the second derivative well since this is a product right since this is sine x times cosine x then we can use the product rule and the product rule basically says a real quick recap here the product rule says um, if you split these guys up and you say hey look this is a function that we'll call f and this is a function that we'll call g then the product rule says give me the derivative of the f times g plus f times the derivative of g and then sum those guys up all right so here goes the product rule on these all right so let's go find y prime y prime now is equal to f prime all right and if f is sine x then that's the derivative of sine which is cosine times g well g is just cosine okay plus f which f is just sine x times the derivative of g prime well g prime's derivative is a negative sine x right so the derivative of cosine is negative sine x okay so here's what we've got let me clean that up just a little bit more because I like to see it this way instead maybe I'll write this as cosine x cosine x um, since I have a positive sine x times a negative sine x I'll write it as minus sine x sine x so I'll read that twice so basically I'm just moving that negative sign out here okay all right well I'm writing it this way because I want you to see let me slide this down I want you to see that to find the second derivative now which is the derivative of y prime I could actually tackle this in two different ways um, one way is to just obviously see that I have another product here for this first term right? I have another product of cosine times cosine and for my second term sine times sine so I could invoke the product rule right we just covered that I can invoke it twice for this term and then for this term the other way to handle it is to actually multiply these two terms together these two um, cosines together and come up with cosine squared same thing here for sine sine times sine is sine squared x and then use something called the chain rule so maybe I'll show both of these methods here for you all right so first method let's see this as a another product okay so I've got f and g here and I'll do the same thing over here for this one I'll, I'll treat this as another product but I'll handle that one separately in a second here okay so here goes the derivative of the derivative right or second derivative so using the product rule which is up here says give me f prime f prime right so what's the derivative of cosine that's negative sine x times g right so times my cosine x okay plus um, f which is just cosine x times g prime which is negative sine x all right so what I have so far right here is simply the derivative of this term right of just that term so all of this right here is just the derivative of that now let me go find the derivative of this second one but you see that there's a minus sign in between so this minus sign I'm running out of room so let me do this on the next line here this minus sign guys carries on down all right carries on down and now I need to go find the derivative of this product right of that product there so maybe what I should do is just kind of wrap this second one here in some brackets of its own okay so now let's see I'm concentrating on this product here it's f prime and the derivative of sine is cosine times g right, plus f which is sine x times g prime which is cosine x and I put this I hope you say I put this in square brackets because this minus sign right here right which I carried on down this minus sign affects both of these terms right here not just this first one but both of them so what I have here let me see if I can squeeze this all on one line now what I have for a, a double prime or a second derivative of y is this term 
negative sine x cosine x right, plus this term but look I see do you see this ne this positive sign and that negative sign it's really just a positive times a negative stays a negative so I'll write it this way okay minus and this minus sign like I said a second ago is like a distributive property it changes both of these in the term so it's minus this one minus cosine x sine x and then it also affects this one here so a negative times this positive makes it minus sine x cosine x alright so I think I squeezed it all on one line here can you see though that all four of these terms are exactly the same right look this has a sine x cosine x that has a sine x cosine x okay so the order is different but commutative property says as long as you're multiplying the order doesn't matter cosine x sine x here and sine x cosine x there so all four of those terms are exactly the same and they all have a leading coefficient of negative one so since they're all the same I can simply add them all up and simply write look my second derivative is equal to negative four times sine x cosine x all right, so there you go. There's the second derivative. It's negative four sine x cosine x. And the tree that the trick really was to remember that this negative sign here, once you find the derivative of this, that negative sign applies to everything after it. Okay, that's one way to prove it. Let me start back with this um, first derivative. Do you remember our first derivative looked like this? Let's see. We had y prime was equal to cosine x cosine x, right? Minus sine x sine x so if you have already learned about this thing called the chain rule alright if you've already learned this thing called the chain rule then we can actually use the chain rule to find the second derivative now how do we do that well first let me clean this up alright since this is cosine times cosine I can write it this way cosine x quantity squared okay we don't typically write it that way. We actually typically write it as um, here. Let me put a pull out a piece of scrap here. We typically write something like that as Have you seen this before? Um, cosine x cosine x. Um, instead of writing it this way as cosine x quantity squared, we typically write it as cosine squared x. Okay, so this right here is the same thing as that right there. They really mean the same thing. But I'm writing it this way, though, instead of this way. I'm writing it this way, cosine x times cosine x, because I want you to see what the inner function is. That's the inner function, cosine x. And the outer function, right, if I cover that up, the outer function is just stuff squared, right? It's just some stuff here being squared. That's the outer function. All right, well, it's the same thing over here for these signs, right? It's the same thing for these signs. It's sine x quantity squared. Okay, now, using this thing called the chain rule, we can go now and find the second derivative. Watch this, okay? First off, for this term here, give me the derivative of the inner function. The inner function is simply just cosine x, all right? So the derivative of cosine x, no problem. That's negative sine x, okay? Now give me the derivative of the outer function, all right? The outer function is just stuff squared. Well, anything squared, the derivative of that, is simply 2 times right two times whatever I had inside to begin with okay and remember that 2 minus 1 just leaves us with it with a uh, an exponent of 1 so it really goes away okay let me keep on going here I got my minus sign I'm gonna bring that down and let's do the chain rule on this guy over here give me the derivative of the inside which is cosine x and the derivative of the outside with well, the outer stuff again is just stuff squared alright and the derivative of that stuff squared is just 2 times that stuff Excellent. All right, so I hope you see cleaning this first term up right here, just cleaning that first term up, I hope you see I could write it this way. I could write it as negative 2 sine x cosine x, right, negative 2, just put the coefficient out front, as well as over here for this term, I also have a negative 2, and I've got cosine and sine together, right? So I've got, I'll just write it this way, sine x cosine x. But look, these two terms are the same. They both have a sine x and a cosine x in it, so I can simply add up their coefficients and come up with negative 4 sine x cosine x. Hey, and that's what we had to begin with if we had done it without 
using the chain rule, right? So both methods work. 